you know, pointing oh, towards the oh, enemy. I found the crocodile. I found the crocodile. You idea? found it? Yeah, it's right here in the water. Okay. Oh, he bit me. No way. Yeah, there's blood yeah, in the water. Yeah, he bit me. Come in. Oh my god. So it's, it's just a, it's a reskin, it's a reskin shot. Looks amazing. It better not be. Looks really awesome. Okay, here we go. The Solomon Islands. It's released two days early, apparently. Which is now becoming a more regular thing. I think DICE did this with the Mercury map back last year as well. They released it a couple of days early. So, Solomon Islands is now out for everyone to play. And this is, I think, my second round. Although, in the title, I'm going to say it's my first round because, you know, that always sounds better. But essentially, it is my first round because halfway through the first round, I ended up quitting because... I thought there was something strange going on. And you're going to notice here that I'm using the M2 carbine, which I wasn't supposed to be using, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, it got released early, and DICE is now making the choice to release it for everybody. So this is now going to be available to you if you want to play with it, rather than having to grind through the chapter rewards. This entire round is just me using the M2 carbine to, to kind of try and show you what it's going to be like. Of course, it's still running with the current TTK, so it's taking several more bullets than I'd like for it to kill people. But um, I found that sticking this longer range sight on it meant it was easier to get headshots. And by this point, the footage that you're watching, I already had recoil buffer active because I had the gun at level 2. And that meant I think the vertical recoil was somewhat suppressed which made it a hell of a lot easier to control at longer ranges if you just wanted to hold the mouse button down. And, well, as you can see already, it just absolutely rips through people, this thing. I'm, I'm really, really happy with how the gun performs, despite the fact that the TTK makes it a little bit less enjoyable. It's still good fun, especially at close to medium range, but anything at long range, the drop-off is, is just a bit mental, really. But, um, yeah, we've already moved far past the first set on Breakthrough. I should explain, we are we are playing Breakthrough here. Uh, and you are the US and you're, in, you're invading the Solomon Islands and the Japanese are defending. We've already made it past the first sector, which is only a one-flag sector. And that can get a little bit hectic, but fortunately for us, <laughs> the defending team didn't really know what they were doing. Many people, as I've said in quite a few videos before, where I've played the map the moment it's come out, People don't know the map. They don't really know what they're doing. They don't know where the cover is. They don't know how big the objectives are. So you kind of get a completely different feeling of the map the very first time you play it. And then over the course of maybe two or three days, matches really change because people start to understand where they can use for defensive positions, where they need to attack so they can get there quickly. It can change massively in the space of... Uh, of just a couple of days but we are now on the second sector of breakthrough and we're in kind of like this harbor area that's sort of been dug out of all of the ground and i kind of liked it because it was like this close quarters area in each of the objectives and then it was kind of mid-range everywhere else and as you can see from some of the kill streaks we're going on here that i don't really think the enemy team knew how to defend at all i was expecting a little bit more resistance than this but my god is it satisfying to kill people with the M2 carbine. I mean, see here, this guy, I mean, his aim wasn't brilliant. I didn't manage to get that guy. Somebody else picked him off. But the way people are just running around, you just kind of know they're not expecting to find attackers in positions that I'm standing or anyone else is standing because they just don't really know the map. But that doesn't mean that the map's bad. The map's actually really good. I, I really, really enjoyed it. On Breakthrough, there isn't as much jungle gameplay as I thought there was going to be. But on Conquest, there definitely will be more jungle gameplay. In Breakthrough, the sectors kind of guide you through the jungle, but they don't do much fighting in the jungle. And in a certain way, I think that's quite good, because in Breakthrough, you get 64 players in one sector. So you've got 64 players in a condensed version of the map. If you put 64 players in the jungle, it would be the biggest meme ever because visibility in Battlefield 5 is already pretty bad because there's less 3D spotting than there used to be in previous games and the lighting of the characters isn't really that great. But if you had 64 players in the jungle area, it's pretty dense jungle, I do have to say. But in Breakthrough, it doesn't really allow you to sit in it too much. It kind of just guides you through to the next set of bases, which I think is a good choice. But on Conquest, there will be kind of like 
one flag with lots of different routes through the jungle, so you will have to use the jungle a lot more. But because everyone's a bit more spread out, I think I think everyone would sort of be okay with that. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about the fact that this is heavily like jungle gameplay further on into the map, or there will be in Conquest, but I think it's a good thing that the map is kind of like, I'd say like a third jungle, and then two thirds just close to medium range, sort of more open gameplay. And I think you can see that from the, uh, from the footage that I've shown you so far. But yeah, we're now at the point here where we're trying to take this second sector, but we've got the classic breakthrough backwards and forwards meme where you take one objective and you lose the other, so you run back over and you take that one, but you lose the other one. And we did that for about 100 tickets, I think. Uh, and this is me here trying to go back over to A at this point, but I think I get killed in the next, like, five seconds. Yeah, it's just here. I couldn't figure out which one I wanted to shoot, so uh, I ended up getting killed. But at this point here, I've just called in an artillery strike. And if you guys don't play Breakthrough very much, artillery strikes on Breakthrough are actually really, really helpful because most people are condensed into smaller spaces. If there is only one objective held by the defenders, then you know most people are going to be on that objective. If you then stick the artillery strike towards the back of the objective, which is where most of them are going to be, defending from the back, you're going to get quite a lot of kills, plenty of hit markers, and it's just going to disperse the enemy off of the point. And you can see here, we took the sector within like 30 seconds. So I'm, uh, I'm glad I saved up for the artillery strike and, uh, and used it at the back here. And this actually, this clip here is a really good example of the M2 carbine not being very great at long range at the moment. As you see there, I did like 50 damage, 47 more because he healed himself, and then finally I managed to kill him. So you can see that there's a, a, certain, a certain amount of lacking power at long range at the moment. But that may end up getting fixed in update five, uh, 6.2 when DICE kind of revert the TTK back to 5.0 levels, but kind of not at the same time, because there's still going to be that, that decrease at long range, but, but whatever. This base here, we're on the A flag at the moment. This is like the river base right in the middle of the map before you get to the dense jungle right on the other side. There is also a bit of jungle behind me as well, and I didn't show you gameplay of that because it was just me running through it, but I have got a little bit of jungle footage later on in the video where you can see us moving up towards the final base but i actually really liked this base here this reminded me of some of the some of the locations on the bad company 2 map uh what's it called was it vantage point i think it was called where it was like you had like the rice fields that or like they were the rice cliffs and there's like the paddy fields or whatever i think it was called vantage point and you had like this area where there was a village at the top of the hill and there were all these little buildings and stuff and it turned into like close quarters mayhem that's exactly what this base felt like to me. And of course, they called in an artillery strike. They're looking in from the jungle across the river. All the cover we've got is just wood. There's not much else cover. You can build lots of, uh, lots of different fortifications. You can build all the sandbag walls inside the buildings to give you a bit more cover. But, but overall, there's not a huge amount of cover here, apart from the fact that there's different levels to the ground. And that gives you some solid cover to hide behind. But I actually really enjoyed fighting over this location because it's quite open around the sides. But as soon as you get onto this little bit of island in the middle, it's just <laughs> it's just absolute chaos. But the defensive team, they didn't do such a great job because they weren't pushing across the river to come and retake this point. And footage that I won't show you because I didn't get to capture any. You can see, I don't know if you can see on the minimap there, you can see the B flag. It is like right further down the river. So as I look out here and probably get killed in a minute, you'll notice on the right hand side, there's a bit of river that sort of goes down the side there. You can kind of see it. I was trying not to peek out too much. There you go. That bit of river down there, that goes to the B flag. The B flag is like 150 meters further away. So yeah, here's a bit of the jungle. This is what it kind of looks like. It is pretty heavy jungle, I'd say. So I went for a run through it with my flamethrower. Um, and yeah, this is kind of what you're going to be running through in the Conquest game mode, not so much in Breakthrough. You'll just move through it and get to the next base. But um, it's really beautiful, actually. And uh, there's not as many low-level bushes as I think people feared there might be. It's more like sort of trees that have got created a canopy, so it's a little bit darker than being outside. But um, I'll be playing some Conquest later on today, so probably in a couple of days I'll make another video about my map my map thoughts in general, and then uh, you'll probably have a better idea of, uh, of the map by then anyway, because everyone probably would have played it by that point. But um, this is us moving up on the final objective. This last sector is only a one flag sector, so it goes one flag, two flag, 
two flag, one flag in this in this set of breakthrough. Uh, and I quite like that. And I, I like the fact that towards the end, it's just a massive pile on of 64 players onto the last objective. But it has to be the right type of objective. And this one here is like a radio station or like jungle base. And there's like a there's a radio tower there that uh, that sort of sets it up the base for what it looks like. It's a bit more open. There are some buildings in there. There's like little trench networks as well. And this is me switching over to single fire on the M2 carbine and taking a couple of people down. But um, I've still got my flamethrower in my back pocket here, and uh, I'll show you some gameplay of that in just a second. But um, no, I quite like this base too. Uh, it supports the defense quite well. The defense can kind of sit up on these hills behind, especially if the attackers flank all the way around. You're down in this kind of like basin here, uh, which makes it harder for you to attack if they're sitting up on those hills. But once again, as I said at the beginning of the video, the defensive team didn't seem to really know what they were doing. And I don't really blame them because this was probably the first time they played. This was my, this was like my one and a half match because I played the first half of one round and then and then I switched out and, and came back over to this because I thought I'd broken the game with the N2 carbine or something like that but PSI didn't break it dice just made a bit of a boo-boo but yeah I was uh going to town a little bit with with the flamethrower because again people were just sort of camping in different places that made it really easy for me to kill them I liked this clip here because it's like they come over the hill and I'm just like yep see you later <laughs> you're dead <laughs> It was great fun, man. I've got to say, it was really good fun playing on this brand new map. And as much as we've had to wait a little while for it to come out, and at the moment we don't know if there's going to be any more maps coming in Chapter 6, if this is the map that we have for like the next six to eight weeks or whatever, then I'm going to be pretty happy because it's got some great infantry gameplay in there. There is influence of ground vehicles as well. There's no planes in the sky, which as an infantry player <laughs> makes me really happy. Uh, overall, I actually really like Solomon Islands from my first couple of days. But as I said, it could change over the next couple of days as people start to figure out where they can defend from and what routes they can take. So I'll be doing another video in the next couple of days to show you like my final thoughts of the map. But I can't imagine it's going to change too much <laughs> from, the, uh, from the feelings that I've had so far. But there you go. That's my first, ah, first round of Solomon Islands in Battlefield 5. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. And, uh, well, if you didn't get to use the M2 Carbine, I think you're going to have to grind to rank 25 to get it. But uh, I think I went 47 and 11 in my first round. So if you can beat that, then send me a video or something. <laughs> but I'll catch you guys in the next one.